It's easy to create customized filters for Final Cut Pro 10 using Apple Motion. Check this out. Oh! This video is part of my online Final Cut Pro 10 training course. If you find this lesson useful, visit GeniusDV.com to register for an online class. Start by launching Apple Motion. Click on the Final Cut Effect box. Then specify a project duration of 3 seconds. Do not press the return key. Press the open button instead. Within Apple Motion, you will now see an effect source layer in the canvas window. Move to the upper left corner and click on the Inspector tab. Then click on the Properties tab. Go ahead and adjust the scale of the effect source drop zone to 50%. At the bottom of the canvas window, click on the Record button. Move the Effect Source drop zone off to the right edge of the visible picture area within the canvas window. Now move the Playhead indicator to the end of the timeline. Then move the Effect Source to the left side of the visible picture area. Use the keyboard shortcut Command 8 to bring forward the keyframe editor. Within the keyframe editor, you'll see a graph curve for your animation. Right-click on the first keyframe and change the interpolation to linear so you have a straight graph. OK, that's it. Navigate to the File menu to save the template. OK, now, if Final Cut Pro is already running, you'll need to relaunch Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut Pro, navigate to the Event Library. Find at least six clips that are three seconds or longer. Then drag all the clips to the primary storyline within your project. Next, select all the clips using the keyboard shortcut Command A. Use the keyboard shortcut Control D to change the duration of all the clips. Type three seconds for the new duration. Now click on the Effects Browser button. Navigate to your customized effect that you created in Apple Motion. Double click on it to apply the effect to all your clips within the Final Cut Pro project. OK, you can now see that the effect is applied to every clip. Now, you may want to click on this Clip Appearance button to show individual clips without thumbnails in order to preserve some of the space within the timeline area. Also. Make sure the snapping feature is turned on. Drag the playhead indicator through your project and place the indicator where the next picture should start to appear. Now drag the incoming clip up and over to snap to the playhead. Repeat the process for the next incoming clip. When available, you can use the spaces underneath for additional clips to save some real estate within the timeline area. OK, that's it. Check it out. If you found this tutorial helpful, Take a look at Genius TV's online Final Cut Pro 10 training. It includes a lifetime membership with access to over 60 lectures that include practice media and project files. Plus, you'll have the ability to ask questions and take notes as you go through the class. Or, if you need hands-on training in a real classroom, check out our 5-day Final Cut Pro slash motion class. Visit GeniusDV.com to sign up.